right, welcome back. Oh man, it's 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 a, it's a good time right now, it's man. Draft we got, season. We got it's the draft family. Season, we got the family back in the building, oh, yeah. fresh off of, of of the first championship victory of the career. And I and I, I should have pulled up the footage. Mm -hmm. I want to go back. I got to go back because we because we we said this a long time ago. We said this was coming a long time ago on yeah. the show. We said the belts was coming. We said the records was coming. Now right. the belt. We got the first first belt is here. Right. Yes. Just yes. you know what? Just we just got to go to it, man. Oh, show them the case. Show, show them the belt, man. Show them what's going on. The, still, we we still undefeated. Uh, yes, absolutely. We still undefeated. Yeah, so uh, hold on, oh, turn yeah. it to the yeah. To the right. Just just the bigs is in the so, building. Uh, you know, what I'm big, saying? big time is, is in the building. In the building. You yeah, know? you see, you see, what, you see that. Y'all see that? Yeah, come on, man. Definitely. Recognize what y'all doing right oh, now. It's the champ. Champ is in the oh, building. Could, Cliff, could you try to pull up that Jada oh, Kiss the champ is here for us, man? We need that in the background or something, yo. <laughs> Look at this, man. Come on, champ. I can take it out. Y'all Come on, see. We get it afterwards. Yeah, we gonna do it after the show. We gonna get it. Then we gonna be focused on the belt. We gonna get to. Talk hey, to you about right. the fight. We ain't gonna get none of that. Listen, man. What's going on? Welcome back, man. <laughs> oh man, I know. Just, oh, oh, oh. Back from Atlanta, fresh, right, right, fresh right. from Atlanta. Yeah, I gotta say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited to have you tonight because my first time on the show mm -hmm. when I first joined the Real Fans Real Talk family, you were here. Oh, you were so natural, man. I couldn't tell. It was my first <laughs> time on. It was my yes. first time on. Wow. And as Trip mentioned, you had talked then. You had already had spoken into existence. Mm -hmm. We're going for belts. We, you already had the game plan. Right. Um, there's actually been two instances where Trip and myself actually tried to get to your fight, and you knocked out the dude before we got into the venue. Oh. That yeah. happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to be mad at you, but I'm, I'm happy for you at the oh, same thing. time. Yeah, bro. you got the Mike Tyson thing going you, on. Thank you, thank very you. excited for you, man. Man, I missed you guys, man. Uh, you know, the love from, from day one before, you know, I was professional. I was showing love mm -hmm. and had me up here consistently, man. That helped out a lot, like, uh, with my career period. And I'm just... just from, the gold, from the Golden Glove days, man. From the from Golden from Glove the days, days, right? To now the yes. belt. Yes. First of all, so, tell us this the, the Atlanta fight when because when did you know that you was gonna get the championship fight because we you didn't give us the, the, the heads up nothing. Man, you know what? I was in such a, a, a tunnel vision uh, motor. I got the call from my partner. You know, I was signed to Evander Holyfield, and uh -huh. uh, we ended up splitting, and I ended up forming my own company, Big Top Promotions, with me and my partner A Dolly. He's probably in the lobby trying to get up here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, man, and you know he put stuff together for me like we believed in each other I was like listen man I'm going independent he was like yo let's do this and you know he got me to fight he called me he said yo do you want to go fight <laughs> uh you know for a belt and I was like yeah you know it was my it was my seventh fight mm -hmm. I've been off for about eight months while I was pretty silent with a tear in my shoulder but you know I fought a guy uh it was just he had 36 professional fights you know he'd been a pro for a very long time and we went out there and we beat him wow. washed him up it's, 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 it's Brooklyn, Brooklyn went down to the A, and you see when we, we, we come back, when we come back with all oh, the yeah, riches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Nets going to do good. We all doing good. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, man. Brooklyn, we're on the road right now, man. man. <laughs> got KD yeah. out here, Steph, uh, uh, Kyrie out there. I need the help, man. You got you big know? time bigs out here with the, with the belt. <laughs> bringing the, yo, man, you holding it down for the city, man. Thank you, man. Now, how was it uh, when you won that fight with someone that was essentially a veteran compared to you being so mm. new what were the emotions that you were feeling during that time <clears throat> um you know what man it was my first time you know going the distance everybody else i, I knocked out you know and pretty pretty much like uh i want to say easy like they were really good tough people, it was early it was, yeah, early it was you know i was just but it wasn't ready for your hands just, let's just call it, what it I, was. I was just superior that night god <laughs> allowed me to be superior that night you know th this night you know, you have a lot going in your head. People say, oh, it's too soon to do this and do that. So when I got in there with, with the guy, he was a veteran. It's, it's a different world. It's a different level. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And But, you know, cream rises to the top. I was able to do certain things, control distance, and give him a cut over his eye and yeah. hurt him and control the fight. And I just want you know, to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me to get out safe and him as well. Yeah. So Talk sad. about the, uh, you, you said something very, very important there where you talked about going out on your own, taking control. Yeah. All right. Talk about the confidence to not only go out on your own and promote, but then have to deal with the shoulder injury and then get to this point now. Like, I'm sure there were points where there was a little bit of doubt. Like, am I going the right path? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What kept yeah. you focused on knowing, like, nah, this is it. This is the way we need to do it. You know, my father, you know, my father, he trained me uh, from young. And I was, I mean, I was knocking out grown men at like 14, 15. So, <coughs> you know, and then it was, it was hard for me to find someone that I could spar with two rounds without me me being serious right. so all these years you know you kind of like you slay the lion the tiger the bear and then you know it comes to your moment 
and you have to really believe in yourself. And part of me going independent was that I believed uh, in myself and my abilities, and I had someone else that, you know, a part of Adal that believed in me as well. So we put, I put myself at the forefront because if I mess up, then the whole thing is like, yeah, right. Screw. So that was really the big thing about it, just self belief and discipline, and you know, I had to stay in the house for like eight weeks mm -hmm. and just do nothing but go to the gym two, three times a day. Now, do you? Because, because, because that's, I mean, that's a similar to the Floyd Mayweather blueprint to where he left Bob Arum. And yeah. wanted to branch out on his own, and and then we saw a Pretty Boy turn into Money Mayweather. Yeah. So was that some somewhat in your in your mind? Very very similar, man. It was very similar. Like Evander, you know, was a great guy. The people, the staff there was, was really great. But it was you know being an African American fighter, uh, everything in boxing is about ticket sales. So mm. they they really pushed that a lot with you. Not so much Evander, you know, uh, but the people that were controlling it. And if you know my my sales weren't as great as they wanted it, it, it would pick my placement on right. television, it mm. picked my placement on this. When I knew that I was, you know, a, a, you know, a, a great fighter, and I didn't feel as if someone sold better, more tickets than me, it should mean that I'm not in the forefront. Yeah. So that was a big decision. It's such a business, like. Right. How, how difficult is it in the business? Because the casual fans who watch and say, mm -hmm. this guy should just fight this guy, and this guy should just do this. How difficult is it to just stay the course and understanding the plan? Because now that you're the champ, there's a, there's obviously an elevated plan in place now. Right, 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 right. Like you just can't fight anybody who wants to fight you. No, no. You know, it's it's we we're moving up. You know, we're moving up. We're gonna get get more titles and just get more recognition. Now it's about you know the name behind yourself that allow you to fight the bigger fights. You know, I still have a lot of work to do when it comes to that because mm -hmm. people are gonna see you and you're here to feed your family. So. They're gonna say, "Oh, I can fight this guy and make X amount of money, and I can fight Justin Biggs." And you know, Justin Biggs has to be a name, yeah, in order for them to have that fight and to make money off it. So right. that's why guys don't fight each other. And the undefeated record is very important to people. If I were to come here and say, "Yeah, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm seven and, and seven, but I'm a good fighter," you're not gonna believe me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that's what it's about. Guys are so afraid to lose. How does having that right there change things, though? Uh, rank rankings, it cha it changes. Uh, it's something uh, it's something physically intent, and then it's a tangible that you can see that you know kind of demonstrates my worth as a fighter, and you can see it. And also, but politically, the the rankings it it put me up pretty uh, really really high in the rankings, and uh, as well as the person that I beat was mm -hmm. someone that mattered. Yeah. You know, someone that you is, is there a rematch clause? Because I know a lot of times with the uh, championship no, fights, it's, it's no rematch clause in the fight. Um, you know, he was, he was okay, he was okay with the loss and, you know, we're moving on to go fight other people and, you know, just keep moving on in the career. So, I'm sorry, go ahead, go no, ahead. Sorry. So with all the things that you've learned, um, the business aspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, just branching off on your own, what is like the biggest piece of advice you want to give to someone that's starting off from all the things that you've seen over these last couple of years? Uh, I was the type of guy, man, that I would go around state to state looking for the most dangerous fighters. Me and my dad to go spar them, mm -hmm. try to embarrass them, and make my name off of uh, other people. But I, I will say that like, I had to change my mindset, mm -hmm. and it just came from when the lights are on, what you're going to do. Like when you're fighting in big tournaments, win things that are uh, substantial. Yeah. And uh, even as an amateur, make sure that you have a professional style because it's totally different. Like uh, that last fight was the first time I ever really been hit. <laughs> mm. I haven't really been clipped. It's a it's a real difference with those small gloves, you know. But I I, I wasn't you know, really hurt. But I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. It's different. It's more rounds, and I got through it, beating me unanimously. You kind of need that though too. You need to. Oh you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you got to know what it's like. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a whole uh, it's a whole different thing, man. <laughs> like shit, you'd be like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, yeah. This is crazy. But that's when you know if you're supposed to be here or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> So just I would just tell them, uh, you know, just build your portfolio. When is uh, when as many tournaments as you, you you can, don't rush it. Try to fight all the big names in the amateurs. Mm. Yeah, that's what I did. At one point, I was just targeting everyone who was a good amateur. Sometimes I, most times I won. Every now and then I was not the victor, but I gained a lot of experience. Okay. You talked about all the knockouts leading up to this, mm -hmm. right? So you go to distance, and I saw the clip that was put up on social media. Right. As you're waiting there for the, it's a unanimous decision. So in your yeah. mind and in your corner, you probably felt like we controlled the fight, we yeah, put the yeah. cut on him, we won this. Yeah. 
But what's that feeling like, that anticipation of waiting for them to just read out the scores and then say your name? Man, it was crazy because the guy, the, the ref, <laughs> I was doing certain things in there that the ref was like, God, stop, stop uh, pushing the guy down. Stop holding. I'm doing this. And I'm just crafty like that. Like, I'm always going to try to see what messes with the person. If holding you is going to mess with you, I'm going to hold you. If putting an elbow, <laughs> right. next, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Right. And he was warning me. He was like, yo, this and that. And afterwards, he was like, yo, you fought such a smart fight. Mm. He said, I thought you, I think you won, you know, and, and then I was like, but, he said, but something, I was like, what? And I'm waiting for the scorecards, and I'm like, whoa, like, is he trying to tell me that I lost? And they said my name, and Zab was there, and everybody went crazy, like, all my people were there, and, uh, but I was scared, and, and I got so accustomed to knocking people out, because I don't like to deal with scorecards and stuff like yeah. that. Because mm -hmm. you don't want a, a, a Pacquiao, Timothy Bradley situation where you get or back your Jeff Horn situation where you get robbed. Yeah. So and it, again, because because you, you are because this, this is the first time you that you did go to the distance. Yeah, and and I got I take it back to because a lot of uh, people would say about Deontay Wilder mm -hmm. because <clears> he would knock guys out so early. Oh, he couldn't go to distance. Yeah, and when he won the belt, he had to go to distance to win the belt. So, right, right, right. Yeah, it's, it was um, it was a great experience. I know in my, in my head, I'm like, yo, I could do the rounds. You know, I can, I'm a complete fighter, not just a front runner. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are front runner. He had a, a guy, I'm so thankful for that experience because he came on so strong at the end. Mm. And, you know, if I wasn't really prepared, then he'd have got me. Well, we've seen, we've yeah. seen up close and personal your conditioning. So I, that doesn't even surprise me. You going to distance, we've yeah. been at, at the gym watching you go fight. Ten guys in a row. Yeah. Oh, who's next? Who we got? Who left? Get that guy yeah. from the parking lot. Bring him in here and yeah. throw him in there too. We ran out of guys in here. Right, right. So that's right. That, that man. I'm, I'm I'm happy for you though, man. Thank like, that, you, it's, man. it's a beautiful thing, especially from where we where we started this thing at when yeah. you first came through yeah, yeah. to now, and and you got so so much uh, so much further to go. How is the the the, the training going with with uh, with Yoel and, and and I know because I know you're working with Zab and, and a lot right. now too. Right. How's that going? Man, it's it's incredible because I have somebody that uh, yeah, well, you know, he's always getting me ready and mentally. And he was a five-time kickboxing world champion, legendary kickboxing world champion. People don't know, so he's been there. And uh, when my father died, he originally trained me. He wanted me to go work with him, and I was around Zab as a kid. I was actually on um, uh, Shade Forty Five yesterday, and I was telling people like Zab is the first person I seen with a stack of money, and every day I'm like Zab, let me get a dollar for some Doritos or some, some Gatorade. The Gatorade was a dollar back then. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave it to me. And from there, I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to be like this. And having him uh, recognize me and feel that I'm a good fighter and go and like, yo, like really endorse me and teach me things is just out of this world. And I have my little brother that also, he's been helping me a lot with, with the training and putting yeah. together game plans. So my team is just incredible the way I feel. Right. As Tripp mentioned, we got to see you, and your work ethic is crazy. Thanks. We, you know, we went to the gym. That was about a year and a half ago. We got to see you train for the fight. Your work ethic is crazy. And the relationship, you can see, I mean, Yoel thinks fondly of you. I saw Zab actually on live during your fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was doing mm -hmm. his own commentary. Right. And then you come from a close-knit family as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen your sister in the gym fight, and you talk about mm -hmm. your dad. How important is that to you? Like, they have that family background. You have that family background where it's like, mm -hmm. we all want this. And let's just make sure we all do this together. You know, the biggest thing I think is that uh, it's like just the spark. And fighting, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, you're like, yo, like, why am I doing this? You know, yeah. sometimes anything people do, you know, it could be a rapper or anything, starting off truly is the passion. And passion is not there every day and it takes, uh, but discipline gets you through the yeah. times. And having a brother and sister and seeing them do something incredible is like a spark. So like when my brother fights, I remember one day I got my first fight, I had a 36 second knockout, boom. My brother goes in there, he fights. He's like, yo, he gets a knockout. And it's like, it's, we're waiting to see, he's like, yo, dang, it's 39 seconds. And then it just keeps like, just energy keeps like going to each one of us. That's that co the competition though. Yeah. That competition helps so much when you have siblings. And that's where, that's, I feel like that's where my edge is, having that. Now, y'all planning on being like the Klitschko brothers where y'all hold all of the belts you know, for, for 10 years? For 10 years. You know what, man? I just think that we're going to be, you know, I want to go on like the Guinness Book of World Records of me being um, world champion, my sister, my brother. And um, I think we'll be the first ones to ever do that. 
Mm. And it would just be something amazing and incredible. Just a family affair. So, yeah, just a legendary, you know, if, if for that. Eli and Peyton, they both got, got Super Bowl rings, so y'all <laughs> yeah. might as well have all the belts. Right, right. Man, it'll be amazing. It's a hard thing to do. You know, we got to keep motivating each other, but I think that we could do it. My sister's incredible, man. I seen her knock out two dudes in the gym. <laughs> My brother, he's he was not knocking everybody out, and, you know, I'm doing all right. <laughs> no, I, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Yeah, I think you're doing all right. You don't even have to be a bro where your sister calls because you you need him to handle somebody. She can hold herself down. So, so she's pretty. <laughs> she's pretty dope. She's my sister's really good. I I think I always say to my sister, I'm like, yo, she'll be the greatest female fighter to live. You know, if she just like focused. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really feel that way. But I've never seen anybody like her with the power, the defense, the speed. It's just the you know. When she gets the, just the discipline and the mindset, yeah. it, you know, it's over. Unless, so, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So what's next for you? Any more business ventures, uh, sponsorship, endorsements, anything like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, shout out to uh, Major World Auto. They have the best cars and the best deals. <laughs> uh, so we have Joy Silver. Right? Uh, it's a real fair, real tough. We need a company car. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Myers and Galliardo, my lawyers, that make sure all my deals are great. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. those guys. You know, they're number one. That's important. Uh, in New York. And uh, also shout out to Def Defend Brooklyn, you mm. know, that uh, they always keep me fly with all the, the clothes and everything that I need. You know, a lot of my, my fight trunks, those are also on sale. You can go to Defend Brooklyn, get some of those, the website, uh, the t-shirts. Okay. And, um, you know, oh, also Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill Restaurant. On Sunday, everybody who's here on this Sunday, I have my victory party. Me, Funk Master Flex, everyone come out, have a great time. You know you guys are invited. Well, you know it's going to be, be it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> we, out, we out there. <laughs> gonna That's be the off day. We out there. Yes. It's going to be insane. Now, now, I've got to ask you, obviously, you're a fan of the sport, mm -hmm. the sport. <clears throat> What do you think of the welterweight division with everything that's going on now? Obviously, we saw Manny Pacquiao with an amazing victory yes. over Keith Thurman. Uh -huh. I saw your, your reaction on live to that as well. Oh, man. That was... Manny Pacquiao is, you know, one of the greatest fighters to ever grace this planet. And he's done something that, you know, him and Foreman and I think Bernard Hopkins would only do that. And in the lower weights where the punch count is higher, it was just the most, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. I, I did not think that he was going to do that. And all the ways that he's traveled, he's one. He, he's one of the greatest. He's he's an. I mean, you can argue he's better than Muhammad Ali, better than Floyd Mayweather, Pacquiao whoa, is. Whoa, whoa. No, I mean in, in the sense of in the sense of <laughs> in the sense of accomplishments. Okay. Not I mean, in a time, a, a division. Yeah. I don't yes, think so. I'm not going by like who's a better uh, fighter per se, because I think that Floyd Floyd be Pacquiao. We've seen that he's he's, yeah. he's. But just like when it comes to accomplishments. You can argue it. Everyone's going to have their own personal uh, yeah. preference. But what he did was just, like, monumental, man. You know, and I think the welterweight division is, is great. It's full of uh, talented fighters. And um, I think that some fighters in that weight class are kind of intimidated by other fighters. But if they get in there and they fight, like, with heart, anybody can be anybody any day. Now that's and, that, and I want I want I want to I want to ask you this because I want to actually uh -huh. transition into this uh, throwback uh, Thursday video that we got in regards to uh, to fighters uh, ducking. Uh huh. One have have you experienced that this early in your career with with guys that should be ready to get in the ring with you aren't trying to get into the ring with you? I mean I've had I've had like wait, real I mean real did they used to say that they used to go to like twenty five fighters to get to get a match. And uh, it's for different reasons. Sometimes people just, you know, they don't want to get hurt. It's like not worth it. Yeah. Sometimes the money may not have been enough, you know. So they, they, ducking, ducking definitely goes on. But, you know, there's been times, that I'm, to be honest, like uh, certain times I, w I chose to fight someone else and I got to someone later on. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. You know. And I, and I say that because in the Throwback Thursday video, we got another friend of the show, retired boxing legend, I ran Barkley. I ran the Blade Barkley, and he in this clip he's actually talking about how Sugar Ray uh, Leonard was ducking him back in the day oh. <laughs> after he beat down the Hitman. Yeah, I bet he. Uh, Tommy yeah. Hearns. <laughs> so, uh, Cliff, when y'all ready in the back, let me know, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna throw that that uh, clip up there because it seems to me that ducking's been going on a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but I mean now they got to come for you now because you got the belt, so they got to come right. in your direction anyway. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Of, Oh, you're gonna play the video? Oh, when, like, oh, the oh, second oh, we're gonna get to a it. lot of you know, a lot a lot of fighters, you know, since you know the stock is stock is definitely I've been blessed for the stock to go up. I get a lot more 
more people wanting to fight. And, and sometimes certain people aren't, uh, I don't want to say like worthy, but it's nothing for you to gain. Right. I, yeah. I think that when it's a fighter out there, there's something to gain, you have something to gain, fight them. Right. If it's not, if you've done a certain amount of work, and your portfolio looks a certain way and theirs has not, then um, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Like even, even I mean, sometimes we get it though, because we we were supposed to see Big Baby versus Anthony Joshua. It yeah. didn't happen. Obviously, you know everybody knows what happened. Mm -hmm. But we do sometimes get those. Yeah, yeah. It's it's certain things like you know with this this belt right here. I've not uh, I have a certain amount of time to defend the belt, right. or they'll uh, have another champion. So sometimes you have different mandatories that yeah. you have to face. I, I'm choosing to. Uh, I don't believe I'm going to. I'm going to choose to go fight for another title. A, 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 you know, a larger title mm -hmm. rather than defend this one. You know, so someone can come and say, "Oh, I want to fight you for that belt," but I say, "Hey, I want to fight I'm for moving on. A, a, a bigger <laughs> title." So, yeah. you know, makes sense. Listen, man, yeah. it definitely makes sense. Cliff, you ready in the back? All right, go ahead, man. Let's rock out, Cliff. I was, I was trying to just clean up past. Um, past fights with guys just where well, they just took fights from me. Gotcha. Well, I know I didn't lose. They just took it because it was because this guy's name was you know this guy's name was getting ready to fight this guy. And they wouldn't give him the Lennon fight also because right. that was a fight that that was um, supposed to happen. happen. Yeah. But the Lennon fight never happened. Lennon, I think Lennon said to you Lennon, that he'll never fight. I'm, I'm never gonna, gonna, gonna fight said, you. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm never gonna fight you. Wow. I said, Dag, Ray, for five million, I'll let you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you think he was scared? Or, or what, what was, what do you think I his... Think definitely he was scared. Because he seen what I did to Tommy, that cut out, that cut out everything, you know. And Ray at that time was the guy that was, was calling the shots with the money and everything. You fight him, he's the money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the only ones that was getting that money was... Tommy Duran and Hagler. Okay. For me, I was the new kid on the block. Couldn't get that money. You know, I, I got comfortable money, but it wasn't. I wanted those tens, those twenty millions. You know. So you is basically you beat Tommy Hearns too bad to the point where now Sugar Ray was not trying to give you that chance. No, it was not even only Sugar Ray. It was. It, okay. it had something to do with the promoter too, Bob Aaron. Uh, you know, okay. <laughs> he, he was he he had all four of them guys, you know, mm. and and those was the only four guys that was making all the money, you know, at that time, and and then, you know, he promised me, you know, he said, well, first I remember the first fight, he said, he said, I said, wow, I'm getting three hundred and seventy five thousand to fight Tommy Hearns for this first fight. He said, yeah. You know, I said, well, after I knock him out, I want the money that him and Ray and them get. He said, yeah, but first you got to knock him out. I said, well, I'm going to knock him out. <laughs> I said, trust me, I'm going to knock him out. And then I did it. And then when I went to the second fight, I get a, a half a million dollars or a million dollars. And I said, wow. You know, he told me, you can't get that kind of money. I said, what do you mean I can't get that kind of money? I said, you told me to knock him out. I beat him up the second time. You still ain't happy. Wow, so Bob Bob Barron, I, I find a lot of a lot of these these promoters. I feel like I'm I'm hearing stories of of how they're kind of just dictating, you know, really what's going on in the sport of uh, boxing. Um, what we see as now is the the fighters more so that are dictating what's going on. You have guys like Floyd Mayweather st um, stepping up, like he just he just got a new deal with Showtime for his next couple of fights. W what do you think it? It's gonna gonna take for really for the for the boxers to start controlling the sport again. The boxers the boxers are controlling the sport. You know what I'm saying? Um, Floyd is doing the right thing. I, I commend Floyd because when when he was with Aaron, he left. You know he left Aaron. Aaron at a time was putting him in fights, and Floyd you know felt that he was trying to get him beat, and then. Floyd escaped that trend of, 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 of being beat and then he started managing and, and doing it himself and stuff and learned to do it himself and, and he's coming out much better and he's beating everybody so you know I, I never had that chance to, to, 
to, to branch off like that because I didn't make that kind of money like they did, you know. And I was promised that kind of money, but I didn't get it. <laughs> this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up? What up? Real Fans Real Talk <laughs> All right, welcome back. Once again, shout out to the champ, Iran Barkley. We might actually get to see uh, Tommy Hearns, Iran Barkley 3 in another, in another couple, of, don't, couple don't, of weeks. Don't, 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 don't <laughs> in a couple of weeks because we got the Ring 10 charity right. event coming up on the 29th of September. We're going to be back at the, at the Marina Del Rey in the Bronx supporting our Ring 10 family. Iran Barkley going to be in the building. Tommy Hearns going to be in the building. We're going to try to get Justin to get in the building with Me? the legends oh, as, as well. We need you out there too. And I'm going to need you to knock somebody out in your next fight out the ring like he knocked out Tommy Hearns oh, out okay. the ring. And that, or, or, or like Tommy Hearns knocked out Martin. Martin out the and ring. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, CBC, we'll the CBC back. Yeah, right, CBC. Right, 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 right. 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 <laughs> well, really quick, Justin, <clears throat> just tell them where they can get you at. Um, you guys can get me on Instagram at Big Tom Biggs, B I G T I M E, Biggs B I G G S. Um, definitely hit me up, and everyone that's been hitting me up about the fight and winning, I appreciate the love, and for everyone coming out t to my fight in Atlanta, uh, I'll be fighting again November first. Uh, hope everyone uh, definitely comes out, and I appreciate you guys in advance. You could be anywhere in the world, and you decide to spend it with me. So. That's and let fact. us know where we are meeting you on Sunday. Oh, you guys are meeting me on Sunday at the best club in Brooklyn, uh, Sugar Hill. Oh, I'm coming to eat. Uh, you guys <laughs> get some food. It's going to be crazy. Uh, we got Funk Master Flex over there and some other celebrities. So it's going to be an amazing okay. time. Uh, the club has been open for 40 years. Uh, all kind of legends have come through there. So definitely come uh, through and have a great time. All right, Labor man. Day. There you have it. Make sure y'all hitting us up on the web, realfansrealtalk.com. <coughs> Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk. And subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. Everything is going to be up there after a while. For myself, Trip Young, the beautiful Emerald Marie, Legend in Two Games, Big Tom Biggs, and of course the bartender, Rashida, oh, what up? Yeah. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Awesome, awesome. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're